because they're going through this developmental stage uh, and they're developing their judgment. And as they develop judgment, it's important that they have good examples of that. They have opportunities to learn, uh, safe places to test their boundaries uh, as they um, grow. And so we, uh, as we develop our prevention messaging, as we work with parents and other stakeholders, if you, you think about teachers in public schools, if you look at school resource officers, uh, you look at anyone who interacts with youth, even store clerks and convenience stores. I have I've watched them, um, you know, uh, someone underage trying to talk them into giving them a beer. Uh, and, and store clerks today, uh, because of this information about the teen brain, about once they understand why the laws are the way they are, I've, I've seen store clerks be incensed that a teenager would try uh, and, and purchase something but, illegal from them. Right, but that's happened throughout the ages, I'm sure. But what we are able to do with this piece of information is to share uh, the why. Why, uh, why we need to be consistent with them, why the law is what it is, why we want uh, kids to have healthy environments and we want them to have positive experiences mm -hmm. and we want them uh, to be engaged with their parents. You know, pa they are by nature risk, uh, risk takers at this point. That's part of their development right. and they're building their skill set around their judgment. Um, but they need to know how critical their decision making is. Parents are the biggest influence. Parents are, parents are the biggest influencer even to me today at my age. So while they're pushing away their parents, uh, and, and as a parent of a teenager, I was adverse to this creature that had suddenly ch my child had Made turned into, yeah. um, it, it was very important for me to know that I was still the primary influencer. Even though I, their peers were, were suddenly um, pulling their attention away, but even through college years, uh, but, but, parents have a major role to play. Right. I'm, I'm curious, Amelia, do, do teenagers, do they want to know this science, know this information? I think what teenagers want is to be successful and accepted and have a good life. And More in have, the moment? Well, no, and have a good you know, future. I really do think that um, families in general I don't want to have drug problems in their family. There's no one that wakes up and says, well, I want to become a drug dependent mm -hmm. person. Right. And I think that um, this information and what we can do as researchers is translate that so it has an impact on their knowledge about what is real and what is true rather than have them go on hearsay about what they might think is true. So I think that um, they do respond to education. They do respond to real facts. They to the real the facts, to yeah. the science of what's going yeah, on. I think that they do want that. I think right. parents want that. I think teenagers want that. Because I don't think any teenager wants to have something happen to them or their friend. Well, how are they receiving the new information that we've discussed today? Well, I think one of the ways is um, through personal stories. That's one of the biggest um, influences on children is that in adolescence is that they really t a lot of take-home messages are through personal stories and peer education efforts in the schools right. have been very effective mm -hmm. um, by educating a group of peers who are willing to be that leader and take on that responsibility of sharing the information with other kids but they take it through the media they can um, take it through their parents they they receive this information um, through a lot of different sources mm -hmm. and it's our responsibility I think as scientists to do an even better job in translating some of the research. And get that message out. Yeah. Well there is a prevention campaign that is running in Florida and it's the Be the Wall campaign. We're going to take a look. Think you've talked to your teen enough about alcohol? Meet the teen brain. Illogical. Real seeking Emotional. Impulsive. Why is the dog in the washer? I was just trying to help. Perhaps Johnny needed more instructions when you told him to wash the dog. The brain develops into the mid-20s. Until then, your teen is more likely to be illogical and impulsive. When it comes to teens and alcohol, be clear, be firm, be consistent. Be the wall. Because they need you now more than ever. Brought to you by BeTheWall.org. Think you've talked to your teen enough about alcohol? Meet the teen brain.
illogical, real sick, emotional, rebellious. Never ride to school. You are not wearing that to school. Oh my gosh, you never let me do anything. When she said she was getting dressed for school, you probably envisioned more clothes. The brain develops into the mid twenties. Until then, your teen is more likely to test boundaries. When it comes to teens and alcohol, be firm, be clear, be consistent, be the wall, because they need you now more than ever. For more information, log on to be the wall. Org. Sponsored by the Florida Governor's Office of Drug Control and the Department of Children and Families. I, I must say that I have seen this campaign in a theater. Good. And it was funny because most of the adults were laughing. Yes. The it, teens were watching, but the adults were laughing. Well, it's really aimed at parents. I mean, it is about parents, and mm -hmm. it is to try and get this new information out to them. Uh, when we started developing the campaign about a year and a half ago, we, we had this little piece of information about how the brain develops up until the 20s. We are like, that's a fairly complex kind of thing, and how do you put that in a 30-second uh, ad, and how do we brand that information? Mm -hmm. we, we really wanted to use marketing techniques to change parent behavior. Uh, so we, we moved to uh, the Be The Wall campaign because we wanted parents to be, be the wall for their youth. Um, again, when they're little, you tell them not to touch the stove because it's hot. But when they get to looking like an adult, then what do you do uh, with them? You, you begin to assume that they have the same abilities that, that a, an adult, adult does. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we took the, uh, the research and we tested it with uh, parents to see what they would react to and would they get the message. Uh, it's very important to test these because you don't, sometimes you have unintended consequences with your messages. These tested really well. And we wanted to use humor too uh, because we remember humor, we enjoy humor, mm -hmm. and we, we yes. didn't want to use scare tactics. Scare tactics really do not work. Uh, kids want to know the truth as we adults want to know the truth. So this is, this is um, about what we know and it's using humor and um, Anyone who's had a teenager knows, again, that one minute they're crying, one minute they're laughing, one minute they love you, one minute they hate you. Uh, and, and this is a way to help uh, parents understand their role and that they are the primary influencer. You, you mentioned scare tactics, and I'm sure there are many parents out there that think, well, you know, hey, it worked for me, it will work for my kid. Does it work in some elements? Does it, does it have a place? No. no? It really, kids want the truth, um, and when you uh, exaggerate the truth or you're, you're not honest with them, it has a negative uh, impact. It really has the opposite consequence that you want. So uh, yes, we need to tell them the facts. We need to be honest about it. There's some things we don't know. Um, and that's true with adults. Uh, we, we need to be clear about what we know about the science, mm -hmm. and we need to be able to put it in a message for them that they can use, in a way that they can use it. Mm -hmm. um, so the campaign was developed uh, in order to get this information um, out in a way that we could, that parents could use it. And we've been testing uh, our market here in Florida. We've seen a 32% increase in parents' understanding of their role as it relates to adolescent brain development. That, that because the adolescent brain is developing, because this executive function isn't mm -hmm. completely there, that um, they still have a very strong role to play in, in keeping their children safe and healthy and, and helping them grow. Well, I think it's helping the executive function of the adults who are watching this. It helped me to see that. Yes. Tim, question, what kinds of things are we, can we think are on the, uh, in the future coming up for us in terms of science and technology that might help you as a researcher and, and as well, Amelia? Well, one of the things that Amelia and I have talked about is uh, understanding how communications research can actually help us tailor prevention messages for these different times when young people are developing. And so how do you find the right balance of all of these uh, advertising or message development areas? And that's a whole area of research that we're pursuing as well. Um, understanding the long-term consequences of drugs in the brain is something we still need a lot more research on. And so, again, giving kids the facts about that is, uh, from my perspective, is scary enough. Uh, Do you feel we're getting close to having that knowledge and information? Well, I think we, we have a lot of it that long-term consequences can be very serious um, and that people become addicted and dependent and, um, and their lives spiral out of control. 
And so does that happen to everyone? No. Mm. Is everybody vulnerable? No. But who is? Yes. We don't have the answers to that exactly. Right. Right. We, um, and that's one of the areas that we'll be spending a, a lot, a bigger investment in in the future is understanding who's vulnerable, who's not so vulnerable, uh, both from a biological point of view, but mm -hmm. also from an environmental point of view. Sure, sure. One, I mean, of the, go ahead. Um, one of the new areas of research that we're undertaking is understanding how um, drug use in college may restrict your opportunities or cause you to sort of settle for something less than what you expected to get out of college. So it may not take you completely off course or derail your entire life, but it may um, lead to just um, less than what you had originally intended for yourself. Or a more momentary stoppage from mm -hmm. progressing forward. How do we balance the need to protect with the need for adolescents to grow and learn? Well, I think there's definitely, as a parent myself, um, I'm continually faced with that challenge of trying to do the best I can in letting my kids have the experiences that they need to, um, to understand the consequences of their actions. But I think it's imperative that parents spell out the very serious consequences of some risk-taking behaviors, including drug use. and. Um, it, not in a scare tactic sort of way, but in a very realistic way that these things are incredibly serious um, for their future. And that you need to provide them a warm and supportive relationship, and you need to support them through thick and thin, but, and you have to tell them that you will be there whether things happen or not, but that you have to spell out that um, you have expressed disapproval of um, illegal behavior, of drug use, of underage drinking, and that you are their parent, not their friend. So I think that you need to provide that in the context of a very warm and supportive relationship with them. But, but if a child has a problem, does it always mean that the parent was bad? No, not at all. I think that there are some parents um, who are just doing the right thing and for some reason, because of exposure opportunity or bad luck or um, genetic wiring or who knows. I mean, we know very little about all of the factors mm -hmm. that predispose a person to a negative consequence. But I think that um, a parent can't blame themselves or blame a particular thing. One of the things that we found through decades of research is that the development of these problems is complex and that there's a multitude of factors that go into whether or not you have a problem. And in Florida, we've really, uh, th there, our, our prevention efforts have always concentrated on the individual and helping the individual develop their, their life skills, their ability to make good decisions as they move through uh, their life. What we are learning now, uh, along with the brain <coughs> science, uh, or because of the brain science really, is that experience and environment play a big role in uh, adolescent development and even our own adult behavior so that uh, the experiences that we have and the environment that we live in also have a role to play. And it's a complex role. We don't know all the dynamics of that, but we do know uh, that even as simple uh, or as simple or as complex as, as how the brain is maturing uh, through those adolescent years and then even as, uh, as we age and how our brain changes, uh, experience and environment and genetics all have a role to play. And, and so from a prevention standpoint, we are really looking at the experiences that our youth have in that time frame when their brain is developing, and we're looking at the environment that we all have to uh, live in. And, and our prevention efforts are growing from one where we are doing uh, an individual kind of an intervention to one where we're doing something like Be The Wall, where we are trying to educate all the parents in the state of Florida using marketing techniques about how their behavior, how their own behavior, their ability to, to be clear, yeah. be firm, have what, this relationship has a huge impact. What an enormous responsibility that is. Dr. Condon, quickly, you have a final thought you would like to add to this? I'll just mention that um, we have all this new science, this new science about the developing brain, and it <laughs> presents new challenges not only for parents and for prevention 
to people about what does this mean and what are the impact, but it also presents a real challenge for our researchers uh, is what is the impact of drugs in this developing brain. And we don't have the answers for that, but we'll have them in the not, in the not too distant future. Very good. Senta, 10 seconds. Uh, prevention is a collective responsibility. We all have a role to play, and uh, it, it behooves all of us to take uh, this science and put it to use. Very good. Amelia? I would like to second that. I think that we need to learn better ways of working together to get these messages out um, and that there'll be new messages and new information that will be just as important. Very good. Well, we are out of time. And before we go, we want to leave you with some resource information you can find at the end of our program or it can be found on our website at www.mctft.com and then look under the broadcast and videos heading for this program. The Brain on Drugs, on behalf of my guests, Senta Gowdy, Dr. Timothy Condon, and Dr. Amelia Aria, I'm Stan Rhodes. Thanks for watching The Brain on Drugs. Take care. We'll see you next time.